good honor good afternoon everyone thanks dr parikshit for very kind words uh, what i'll be talking is one of the less talked gliptin that is evogliptin so i think uh, in next 15 minutes i will try to cover up the scientific data present about the evogliptin so just like most of the gliptin this also is a selective potent reversible inhibitor of the dpv4 it is well studied for its efficacy and the safety though it is not globally approved it is approved mainly in the india and apart from india korea and the russia we all know how dpv4 inhibitors work it binds with the s1 s2 sites of the dpv4 enzymes and uh, if you see the evo cita in the tenali it binds also with this s2 extensive which makes it more selective and more potent dp4 inhibitions if you see the pharmacokinetics it reaches plasma concentration peak within 3 to 5 hours and it is getting 80% inhibition in less than 1 hour after the administration that it's a long acting molecule its terminal half life is more than 32 hours and it is reaching a steady state concentration within 3 days so within 3 days you can expect a full clinical efficacy and according to in vitro study evogliptin is not inducer of the cytochrome p450 and it is metabolized is primary by the cyp34a making it one of the safe drugs as far as the drug interaction is concerned the renal clearance 27 to 30% of the evogliptin gets either excreted unchanged into the urine so majority is through the non renal route so no dose adjustment is required just like a tenali or a linagliptin because urinary excretion is not the primary pathway for the eliminations of the evogliptin same is for the hepatic impairment patients mild to moderate hepatic impaired patients you don't really need to do the dose adjustment so if we give the evogliptin we expect more than 80% which is the actually requirement of any dp4 inhibitor to get approved or to be effective for more than 20 uh, for more than 80% for 24 hours and the endogenous glp1 levels would increase by 1.5 to 2 times and we expect around 20 to 30% reduction into the postprandial blood sugars and if you see the efficacy point of view this is a mexico brazilian population study bridging study where the baseline hb1c was 8.9 and evogliptin 5 mg which is a standard dose is showing the a1c drop as good as the citagliptin 100 mg so it is a equipotent for citagliptin 100 mg and this is a evergreen study where they have compared the evogliptin with the linagliptin for the efficacy and the safety and subsequently they have seen the results of the evogliptin based on the cgms data where how much glycemic variability is reduced with use of the evogliptin so just like a linagliptin evogliptin also has a similar hb1c drop at the end of 12 weeks and glycemic variability is comparable though it looks more in favor of evogliptin compared to linagliptin but if you see the p value is not much difference so glycemic variability reduction is similar with the lina or evogliptin slightly better with the evogliptin as far as the mage and the standard deviation of the glucose is concerned at the end of 24 weeks again evo and the lina showing equivalent drop into the hb1c and you can see the reduction into the glycemic variability with the evogliptin at the end of 12 weeks and 24 weeks all different aspects of the glycemic variability mage sd minimal glucose maximum glucose and the average blood sugar all drops significantly and the effect is actually more pronounced when patient continues more than 12 weeks and continue up to 24 weeks of time so if you see the glycemic efficacy point of view evogliptin given orally has a good a1c drop as good as a linagliptin any glycemic target of less than 7% at 6.5% was achieved in 80% and 48% of the population which is a good just like a most of the gliptin in a 
four week study evagliptin was found to be quite safe and effective anti diabetic agents with significant improvement into the glycemic variability we all know that any drug which does not produce hypoglycemia should show some improvement into the glycemic variability so x versus y which one is better is actually uh, not directly compared but i think any drugs which reduces the uh, glycemia without producing hypoglycemia should reduce the glycemic variability significantly more important studies to be discussed is about the uh, data of the use of evagliptin in presence of the renal dysfunctions so here the patients with a mild to severe renal dysfunctions and the cmax and the uc was studied that is a pharmacological analysis that any drugs which has a more than two and a half times the compared to normal population if the area under the curve is less than 2 it is absolutely safe and no dose adjustment is required so here you can see here that in mild and even moderate renal insufficiency the area under the curve does not cross 2 so it suggests that no dose adjustment is required whether patient is having a mild or moderate though just like most of the drug it has not been studied in end stage renal impairment requiring dialysis or patient have a Uh, total end stage renal disease where egfr is less than 15 for that point of time what about the hepatic impairment patients mild and moderate hepatic impairment patients there was absolutely good efficacy with good safety with ivogliptin so severe again except insulin uh, in any major organ failure we always recommend patient to be on a uh, insulin therapy and this is a very interesting data about the use of ivogliptin in a patient with a nfld which is emerging as a not commonly uh, diagnosed or looked for but most common now cause of chronic kidney coronary liver disease is not the alcoholic liver disease now it is a non alcoholic fatty liver disease sir like dr uh, madhav bhai would agree that we never used to see a patient having a chronic liver disease if the patient was not alcoholic now 8 out of 10 are non alcoholic fatty liver disease going for the uh, actually end stage chronic liver disease or a cirrhosis with a portal hypertension also so we always want the uh, drugs which should be working very well in a patient with a nfld so this is the mean age of the patient of 52 bmi is not very high just like a matching with the indian bmi around 28 mean bmi and then hepatic fat content which was measured by the mri pdf which is the gold standard of non invasive measurement of the fatty liver disease is the use of evagliptin significantly reduced the hepatic fat during the 24 weeks and absolute liver fat content also decreased from 16% to 14.3% though we don't have a hard end point data with for that matter any of the nfld treatment algorithm we don't have any hardcore data but there are some suggestions that evagliptin just like a uh, pioglitazone or a glp1 or a saroglitazars or a sglt inhibitor is showing some benefit and at least it is not harming the patient with the nfld so this is again in summarizing this nfld data in this 24 week study trial evagliptin was safe and showed a trend towards reduction into the liver fat for the patient with a type 2 diabetes with nfld though the most important treatment of nfld is the significant weight loss no pharmaco agents is going to match what the weight loss would be doing to the nfld patient at least 7% of weight loss significantly reduces the progression and reversal also the nfld if the f1 f2 score of the nfld patients are doing the good lifestyle modification but apart from that we all know that lifestyle modification is a short term for most of the patient and we need to have some pharmacological agents to prevent the nfld going into the nash and then ultimately unfortunate cirrhosis so what about the cardiovascular disease because it is not having a cardiovascular outcome trial so there was a cardiovascular risk population based study from the south korea that to describe the demographic and clinical characteristics of patients of type 2 diabetes they were compared from the after metformin whether glimepiride dp4 and what happens to the cardiovascular outcome as a second line treatment in the south korea uh, database and you can see they had a huge patient populations and out of this they had a data of around 3 lakh 1 
17,000 patients and out of them 28,000 patients were on glimipride after metformin, around 1 lakh patients were on DP, different uh, DP4 inhibitor, around 3,000 patients among DP4 inhibitors were on evogliptin, around 10,000 patients were on a SGLT2 inhibitor, different SGLT2 inhibitors and very interestingly DP4 inhibitors had a significantly less cardiovascular event and very interestingly SGLT2 inhibitor user had no significant reduction into the cardiovascular event. This is again a population based retrospective study. This is uh, not uh, the trial population or real world data with most of the SGLT2 inhibitors also matches with the trial data but here there was a null association with the uh, use of SGLT2 inhibitor. So evogliptin either decreased the risk of CVD or had no associated increase in the risk of the cardiovascular events and it was comparable to other DP4 inhibitors. So that was about the cardiovascular uh, population based data available. We don't have a cardiovascular outcome trial and evogliptin with metformin I think will brush through these slides because we all know that any drugs which you add with the metformin and the drug is going to have a synergistic effect. What I personally have observed in my routine clinical practice and even my assistant doctors also have started noticing that for whatever reason if the patient is not on metformin other drugs efficacy goes down significantly. Efficacy as a monotherapy is not that effective but efficacy of the all agents except probably secretagox is significantly reduced including gliptin SGLT2 inhibitor if the as metformin is not on board. That is our observation in a patient with a renal failure or those who are not tolerating the metformin at all and you are uh, depriving the patient of metformin whatever you give small dose of metformin sometimes we give 250 mg twice a day also works very well in such type of the patients. So I don't think that we need to discuss about the safety and efficacy of the metformin with evogliptin which is better than giving the evogliptin or a metformin as a uh, monotherapy. There is a definitely a drop of the HbA1c uh, even in the Indian populations and the multinational global study also showed the same thing. The safety it is as safe or as well tolerated as all the gliptins are there. The, there is no other uh, uh, safety signals with the evogliptin including uh, whatever the population based data about the heart failure also. And uh, this is the Indian data about the use of the evogliptin for 12 weeks and 24 weeks showing the HbA1c drop of 1.45 percent in the patient's baseline HbA1c was 8.6 percent with a good tolerability data. And this is again a CGM data of around 6 patients on evogliptin showing a significant improvement into the time in range and above and below the targets also was significantly reduced. So this is again a target range significantly got improved. And this is ADA data of around HV1C drop of 1.2% if the patient is on a EVA evogliptin with metformin added to the insulin therapy. Again insulin alone in a typical type 2 diabetic patient is not actually as effective as you add some agents like AGIs for that matter like I use the most common is the AGIs which to reduce the postprandial surge and gliptin, metformin and if no contraindication a small dose of pioglitazones also works very well including SGLT2 inhibitors. So this is the efficacy and safety of evogliptin plus metformin in elderly Indian diabetic patients tolerating it very well and CGM also showed a significant reduction into the glycemic variability. So as an add-on to glimipride metformin naturally if you add the drug with a different mode of action it shows a significant reduction into the glycemic parameter with reduction into the glycemic variability also. So I don't think that uh, we need to talk much about this adding the metformin. What is more interesting would be before we start using as a, as a routine practice in all patients is the what are the ongoing data which is going to be emerged with the use of evo evogliptin and quite interesting data actually from the different parts of the world predominantly from the Korea that PKPD study and safety tolerability in a hemodialysis patient with a evogliptin. Again it will be very interesting drug because uh, trials because it shows the safety and efficacy again hemodialysis patients sometimes apart from insulin requires some agents so that would be very interesting. Effect of evogliptin on albuminuria and showing the uh, some re reversal in the presence of the albuminuria or renal safety parameters in a real life scenario. What we had discussed was the PKPD data that it is safe. The 
PKPD of the drug drug interaction of EO and EMPA or DEPA in healthy male individual. We don't anticipate that that would be much drug to drug interactions with that. The safety and efficacy of EO when added to metformin and DEPA again we are not we know that it is going to be effective and that is a open label trial of inhibitory effects of evogloptin and progression of the CAVD that is a pleiotropic benefit of the evogloptin is plan presence of calcipic aortic wall disease specifically and the role of evogloptin again it will be very interesting we all know that atherosclerotic calcipic aortic wall is one of the ignored but very common eco findings which we see in our routine clinical practice so that will be interesting evolution the effect of the evogloptin on the blood glucose control through CGMS again we got uh, some data but we will have some more data from the India and uh, safety and the efficacy of evogloptin on top of the metformin and DEPA again which we expect it to be showing some reduction into the HbA1c and glycemic variability thank you very much for your patience hearing